All right, so um, <clears throat> I guess on the video, you got y'all got to this part here where you're converting uh, from radians to degrees and degrees to radians, right? Uh, and we developed what a radian was back when we were together, right? And we, we came up with these two conversion factors, right? 180 degrees is pi radians, pi radians is 180 degrees. So that's, that's the simplest version of it. Uh, you could use 360 and two pi if you want, but uh, <clears throat> it has an extra factor of two. So let's come down here. We'll start with uh, a, <clears throat> a 19 pi eighths. Um, <clears throat> That must be an angle, huh? What are the units of that? Trick question. There are no units, right? There are none. <clears throat> but if it's in the context of an angle and there are, there's no degrubble, then we know it must be radians. So we can write rad or rads behind it as a description, right? That's all it is. It's a description. And what that might help you do is convert it because you can put rads over one, right? Anything divided by one is itself, including words, right? What's... Uh, What's love divided by one? Love, yeah, very good. Times, okay, so why would we want to do that? Because dimensional analysis. We put rads in the bottom because they have to divide out. And what goes in the top? Degrees. And now it's either pi over 180 or 180 over pi. And you know it has to be this right here. So then it gives you something to divide out, even though they're technically not there, right? And now we can multiply straight across. But oh, wait, what happens with the pi's? Do we even need to type those into the calculator? No, they divide out. So now, if you want, you can go to the calculator. And what do we have? We have a 19 divided by 8 times 180. And it doesn't really matter the order in which we do it, as long as we, we don't need to worry about the 1, do we? As long as we do it in the, in the right uh, sequence, 19 either times 180 and then divided by 8, or you can do 19 divided by 8 times 180. Okay, either way, and you get this fantastic, uh, you get 427.5 done, right? No, it's degrees, right? There you go. Pretty easy. Second one, part B. Now I start you with 295 degrees, which is in which quadrant? What quadrant does that guy live in? Quadrant four, good. It's just between 270 and 360. Again, you can put that over one, and then now it gives you a degrubble to divide out. You want rads to appear. So now it's pi over 180, and you can divide out the degrubble. So uh, I don't know if I said it on the video, but <clears throat> when it's an angle in radians, most of the time, if we can, we like to leave pi visible because without writing the word rads behind it, pi a lot of the times is a good reminder that it is an angle. Now, that's not saying that it has to be an angle just because it has pi visible. There's numbers that have pi visible. But in the context of what we're doing, let's leave the pi visible. So all we're going to do is 295 divided by 180. <clears throat> 295 divided by 180. Boom. And then <clears throat> it looks like it's a repeating decimal, right? 0.8888. And repeating decimals are rational numbers. It rounds at the end there. So we can just hit math, enter, enter. Math. Enter, enter, and it converts it to a fraction. So that's 59, whoa, 59, 36. But what still needs to be multiplied? The top still has a pi, all right? So we like to leave pi visible. And then if you want, you can put radians behind it. So that's 59 pi 36. Now, you could just go ahead and say that times pi. And then you get this right here, which is five bless you, 0.14 bless you, eight rads. Now that could be a nice number as well because we know it takes 6.28 radians to get all the way around. And 5.148 looks like it's just short of six full, uh, 6.28. So that would be a good indicator that it's in quadrant four as well. Now, what we're going to get used to here is how can we tell from 59 ply bless you, 36? I think you're allergic to pie. That's unfortunate. Yeah, more of a cake guy. <clears throat> I don't discriminate between the two. Um, how can we tell if we see 5936 that it's in quadrant four? Because that's what the next question is going to really relate to. Let me, let me show you how. If we do this, let's, uh, 
off to the side here. Let's let's rewrite it. Let's just say that theta is 59 pi 36, which we know is in quadrant four. 36 is an important number. That's the denominator of your simplified pi. So remember that this is zero radians and this is pi radians. And once we know that, we can divide it in half, right? Half of pi is pi halves. And now we have our counting interval. One pi halves, two pi halves is pi. And then down here, of course, would be three pi halves. Go again, you get four pi halves, which simplifies to two pi. And then you keep counting, six pi halves, seven pi halves, eight pi halves, so on and so forth. You're gonna notice that it's gonna be pretty easy to figure out where these angles live, 59 pi, 36, uh, just based on the denominator. So here's what we're gonna do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write pi in terms of 36. So if you have a pi and you cut it into 36 pieces, so that everybody in class gets, gets a slice and maybe a couple people get two, and you eat the whole pi, how many slices did you eat? 36, right? So pi is the same as 36 pi 36, better that? Yeah. Now let's do the same thing we just did. We'll take half of 36, which is what? 18. So now we have our new counting interval. It's equivalent to pi halves, which is 90 degrees. If you want to say that this equals 90 degrees, you can. But now I can count by 18s, right? Every time I go to another axis, I'm counting by 18. So 18 plus 18 is 36. What's 36 plus 18? 54. 54. So this would be 54 pi 36. And if I went another 18, what's 54 plus 18? Uh, 72 pi 36, which, oh, by the way, 72 divided by 36 is 2 pi. Okay. So now that I've written basically the quadrantal angles, that's what we call those. The quadrantal angles are the angles that land on the axes. Was that in the video? Did that y'all get to that yet? Okay. Um, now I can now I can see exactly where 59 pi 36 lives. So 59 is bigger than 36. 59 is even bigger than 54. Yes. So if I'm going to draw it, I'm going to come all the way around here, and I'll just label this as 59. Pi 36. I'm going to label it out here at the end of the terminal ray instead of up there. What we're going to do in the next uh, problem is we want to figure out what the reference angle is, right? That's what it's all about. What is the reference angle? We know how to do it with degrees, right? We would do 360 minus whatever it was. But if we're in radians, look how much easier it's going to be. I'm sitting at 59 and I'm stopping short of a full rotation, which is 72. How much further do I have to go to get from 59 to 72? Three? 13, yeah. I need to go 13 more pi 36. So that is your reference angle. Your reference angle is 13 pi 36. You wouldn't even really need a calculator, right? We're going to start thinking exclusively in terms of radians. We're, we're going to... We're not going to convert to degrees, get the answer, and then convert it back to radians. If you, if you want to, you can, but you're doing yourself a disservice, right? So that's not hard. It's actually kind of uh, fun easy. It's kind of fun easy, right? Yeah. I like that. <clears throat> it's good medicine, right? I'm already feeling better. <clears throat> okay. So um, let's go on to the next. Any questions on that? Any comments on that? Besides fun easy. All right. Letter 10. Oh, yeah, I thought of my fever had broke yesterday. But I'm calling numbers letters. I must still be sick in the head. But that's they don't know there's no medicine for that. <clears throat> Antibiotics don't cure that. <clears throat> for each of the following angles, theta, find the coterminal angles alpha such that alpha lives between zero and two pi. That's our sweet zone again, right? Between zero and two pi, that's like between zero degrees and 360 degrees. That's still within one positive rotation. That's where we're always gonna try and find within one 
positive rotation. And then we're going to draw it, which is going to help us find the reference angle beta. So instead of using subscripts like theta cot and theta ref, we're just going to name them something different. Theta, alpha, beta. Given theta, we're going to find the coterminal angle alpha, and then we're going to find beta. All right, ready? Here we go. Four, six, three, six, five, five, sevens. Oof. That must be an angle in what, what units? No units, All right. So it, it must be radians, right? Um, okay, let's see. Um, is, is this bigger than one rotation? Yeah. It is, right? How do we know that it's bigger than one rotation? Oh, uh, well, it, what if the top were equal to seven? Would that be one rotation? That would be a half rotation. Yes, very good. It would take how many pi sevens to go around once? 14. So when you have an angle in radians, it always, and you see pi visible, it's a fraction. It always takes twice the denominator of those things to get around once, okay? So one rotation is 14 pi sevens. So here's the easiest way to get rid of full rotations like we did with degrees, right? We took the big number and we divided by 360, got rid of the whole number, multiplied by 360. It's a little bit different when it's radians because you're not always going to be dividing out the same number, but you will always be dividing out twice the denominator, okay? So we're just going to work, in other words, with the coefficients of pi sevens. So go to your calculator, turn it on, and type in four, six, <clears throat> three, six, five, and we're going to divide it by not seven, 14. 14. If you divide it by seven, you're going to get the number of half rotations, which is not what we want. <laughs> yeah, no, because that would divide by 49. No, you divide by seven, you divide by two. Oh, there you go. There you go. Or just divide by 14. 14. There you go. Or you by okay, there's other ways. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Parentheses around the seven and two, though. All right, so I took the coefficient of pi sevenths and I divided it by twice the denominator. Yes, yes, yes. So that tells me how many rotations I have. 3,311 rotate. Do I care about the full rotations? No. So I'm going to do the same thing at this point. Minus 3311. Now what we do is we multiply by the exact same number we divided by, right? When it was 360, we always used 360. Here, we divided by 14, so guess what we're going to remultiply by once we get to the whole numbers? 14. Boom. And what that does, it doesn't give you your answer. It gives you your new coefficient of pi sevenths. That leaves us with 11 of the pi sevenths. Okay? And if it were negative, we would add one more rotation. We would add 14 to it. All right? <clears throat> Simple enough, right? Simple enough. So that, that should be our answer. Is, is, is that within one positive rotation? Yeah, all you have to do is look at the coefficient of pi sevens. Is it between zero and 14? It sure is, okay? So this is the alpha, which if you want to give it another name, its birth name would be theta coterminal, right? But then we give it a nickname of alpha. It's the same thing. All right. Any questions on how we're gonna do that? Step two, we need to graph it in standard form. So where does 11 pi sevenths live? Well, come over here to pi. That's where you're gonna start every time and just call pi seven pi sevenths, right? Seven pi sevenths, like we did 36 pi 36. Now you just take half the numerator. What's half the seven? Yeah, it's probably better to use a decimal here. 3.5 pi sevenths. That way we can keep it in terms of pi sevenths. Now we have our counting interval. Once you have this number here, you can create as many quadrantal angles as you want. Just keep counting by that number. So 3.5 plus 3.5 is seven. What's seven plus 3.5? 10.5 pi sevenths. I know, it's exciting, right? And what's 10.5 plus 3.5? 14 pi sevenths, and that's your checkpoint because what's 14 divided by seven? Two pi, that's once all the way around. 
So now we have our axes. Of course, this is still zero, coterminal with two pi. We have our axes, our quadrantal angles labeled in terms of pi sevenths. And now we can easily determine where 11 lives, right? By comparing numerators. 11 is a little bit bigger than 10 and a half. So it must live where? Also in quadrant four. Now just draw it anywhere in quadrant four. It's okay to label it out here if you want at the terminal ray. I know sometimes it can get a little bit crowded in there. So labeling at the end of the terminal ray is fine. Actually, there is no end of the terminal ray, right? At the end of where you drew it. And now, now the easy part. The reference angle is always the positive acute angle between the terminal ray and the what axis? X-axis. So is it this one here that I'm shading? No. no, it's this one here. And now it's easy, right? We'll call it uh, theta ref if you want. And then we'll give it that nickname that the instruction said, call it beta. And now it's easy. We're sitting at 11. We need to get to 14. How many more do we need to go? Three pi sevens. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And we don't need to even worry about degrees anymore. It's easier really. If you know how fractions work, and I hope you do, right? Order a pizza tonight if you don't know how fractions work and just kind of get the family involved. Maybe, maybe eat a whole pizza, right? Eat, 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 is, is, it, is, it, is it more to eat seven pie sevens or 36 pie 36? Oh, it's the same, but one of them makes you seem like a pig, right? 36 slices. 30, I ate 36 slices of pizza. Yeah, but how th they were they were slivers actually, you know. The whole thing is one slice of pizza, right? Thank you. What if you sliced each slice infinitely thin and you ate infinitely many of them? Yeah, and you probably wouldn't eat anything because if they're infinitely thin. There's no calories, right? And you can eat it forever. Oh, math. Oh, wow. That is a trick to losing weight. Just eat pizza every day. And just when you order it, can you slice that infinitely thin for me? Thank you. And if you order from Domino's and pick it up yourself, they pay you $3 on your next order. I've seen the commercial. I was laying around feeling bad yesterday. And that commercial came up like once every commercial break. <clears throat> anyway. They're tipping you as the delivery drivers with their whole ad campaign is. All right, so there you go. I, I want to kind of sit here on this problem and just savor it, right? Because it's, it's been easy, right? It's good medicine. All right, y'all got the idea. Let's look at letter B. Y'all see that uh, little uh, thing out in front of the uh, ver vig virgule, the horizontal division bar? The horizontal, it broke, right? Yeah, that's kind of sneaky subtle, right? Yeah, <clears throat> like a bl blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat that isn't there, right? Sneaky. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <clears throat> um, it is a negative, okay? So we, we've worked with negative angles before. We just know that there's that one last step where we have to add a full rotation, right? So here we go. We are going to work with the coefficient of... Pi 11s. Got it? We're going to look at the coefficient of pi 11, so which happens to be negative 7, 8, 9, 6, 3, 7. So like we've done before, we're going to do negative. Make sure you include the negative in there. 7, 8, 9, <clears throat> 6, 3, 7. And we're going to divide it by what? 22, twice the denominator. Boom. There's the number of full rotations. Let's add back the whole number. Plus 3, 5, 8, 9, 2. Enter, and now we remultiply that by what we divided by, 22. And notice that's going to give us negative 13 now pi 11s. But that is not the one we want, is it? Okay, so just like before, we would have to, let's call this theta ref, but it's not, or it's not the coterminal that we want, sorry. This one is coterminal with the angle, but it's not the coterminal angle we want. So all we got to do is add one more full rotation to it. And when we're in radians, one rotation is how many pi 11s? 22 pi 11s, right? So really all you're doing is you're adding 22 to that. So see how we're working with a different number every, every problem, but it's always the same number. Now here's where you interpret your calculator's answer. 
Is your calculator's way of saying what? It's nine pi elevens. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> All right. So that is the coterminal angle now that's between zero and two pi. We just added one more rotation to it, which since we're working with coefficients was 22. Now that we have the coterminal angle between zero and two pi, we know it is because nine is again between zero and 22, right? That's one rotation. Now we graph it in standard position. So you come over here to pi and you say that's the same as 11 pi 11. And now you kind of partition that. What's half of 11? 5.5. So we get 5.5 pi 11. And now we've got our counting interval, 5.5 every time. 5.5 plus 5.5 is 11, verifying. 11 plus 16.5, thank you, Brady, pi 11. And then just for check, right, 16.5 plus 5.5, 22 pi 11, which of course is two pi. Yeah, and of course, if you want to call that zero, so he's not left out. And you know what? Calling him zero still makes him feel left out, right? Because everyone else has a pi 11. So it's like, okay, zero, we'll call you zero pi 11, right? We'll make you spiffy. He's like, thank you. Yeah, you're still a big nothing, but at least you look better. Huh? And he has a French curl? What? A friend. Oh, a friend. A French curl. I don't know why I heard that. Okay. Yeah. Where does nine live then? In the second quadrant. Again, and all you have to do is draw it in the right quadrant. So uh, you can label it out there. Let's call this nine pi elevenths. You can also label it down here if you want. Remember, we we're saying we're calling that alpha. That's its nickname. So if you want to label the arc alpha, that's kind of customary because nine pi elevenths is kind of large, but write nine pi elevenths out at the end of the terminal ray. And now you're like, okay, I got to get to the X axis. That's my reference angle. I got to get to the X axis. I'm either short of it or I've gone past it. In this case, I'm short of it. I'm at nine, I got to get to 11, which means I have to go how many more? Two, there you go. So the reference angle, theta ref, bless you, which of course we're calling bubba beta, is two pi 11s. It's fun, it's easy, it's fun easy. Yeah. What if it were easy and fun? Easy fun, that doesn't sound as good. Easy fun, I don't know. Fun easy sounds good, flows, flows nicely. Fun easy. There you go, it, yeah. Keep, keep the main thing the main thing, right? Yeah. I don't care if you're learning math or not, as long as you're having fun, right? That's what education is all about. Just showing up and having a good time. If we learn anything, so be it, right? Yeah, I know. Ugh, might get fired if that's my philosophy, but hey, you can do both. Or you can learn and have fun, right? Yeah, sure. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's, um, how much time we got? We're doing on time. We got 20 minutes, 19 minutes. Okay, here, before we do part C, let me give you one to try on your own. Let's say the theta is, let's see, how about, uh, you want a negative one? Yeah, okay, how about negative six, seven, four, four, one, zero, um, pi, and then a good prime number, let's see, um, January 20, no, that's not even prime, 20, 20, let's do 20, uh, Sevenths. It's not prime, but there you go. No, let's do 29ths. 29ths. There we go. 29ths. Okay. Do the same thing. Find alpha between zero and two pi. I don't even know where this guy lives. And then find beta, which is theta ref. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Hey, Giovanni. We're on example 10. We just finished 10B and we're doing an extra problem. And I'm recording. So if you go back and watch the video, you'll hear me say, hi, Giovanni. Feel free to say, hello, Mr. Corporal, when you're watching it. On this day in 1940, Tom and Jerry debuted. How about that? Classic, right? Yeah, I know, right? Great, great show. Teaches kids all about violence and how you can recover from it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Itchy and scratchy, right? Are uh, based on Tom and Jerry. So, and it's National Flannel Day, and I, I, I have lots of flannel, but I didn't wear flannel today because I didn't know it until I got to school. So, yeah, maybe maybe I'll celebrate when I get home. Maybe I'll just wrap myself up in flannel and <clears throat> go back to sleep. Maybe. Let's see. Let's see how you all are doing here. I've got a negative angle. It's negative 67410 pi 29. So, again, we're working just with the coefficient of pi 29. So, if we type it in, we get negative. Six seven four four one zero. You divide it by not 29, but twice 29. Now, if you don't know what twice 29 is, you can do either what Brady said, put it in parentheses and do two times 29, like that, or you can divide by two and then divide by 29. Either way, uh, it's that many, that many rotations negative. We add back plus one one six two seven, and now we remultiply by the same number we divided by, which was what. 2 times 29, which is, of course, 58, right? Okay, good. Boom. And now you get negative 44 point. Say it for me. Which is a calculated way of saying what? It's very small. Yeah, round down. Negative 44 pi 29. And now you're like, oh, but that's negative. So I add one more rotation to it. So plus twice 29, which of course is 58. And then you get, uh, I guess I'll put plus uh, 58 pi 29. You don't have to show this again. You could just go straight to, oh, 13.9. I like that song better. 14. Yeah, good. 14 pi 29. And again, I chose an angle that was kind of boring because where does 14 pi 29 live? Yeah, if this is 29 pi 29, right? That's pi. Half of 29 is 14.5 pi 29. And now I don't need to keep going because I know 14 stops just short, just short of the y axis, right? So there's 14 pi 29. And here's zero pi 29, right? There you go, zero. Looking spiffy. Thank you. So what's the reference angle? Also 14 pi 29s, right? Y'all would say it's easy when the coterminal angle is in the first quadrant. I say it's boring, right? Yeah. But again, it's the same idea. If you're in quadrant two, it would be 29 minus the coefficient. If you're in quadrant three, it would be the new coefficient minus 29. And if you land in quadrant four, like we said, it would just be 58 minus, right? You draw the picture and you just look. How do I get to the closest x-axis? And that number should always be what? Two things, positive and acute, right? So acute means, in this case, it should be between 0 and 14.5, OK? All right. Let's look at these last two here. <clears throat> Letter C, 1498763 pi. It must be an angle in radians. Ooh, that's a, that's a lot of rotations. Um, what, do I, what, what do I divide by? It doesn't have a denominator, does it? Well, no big deal. <laughs> now it do. Now it do. <laughs> it do now. 
I can do the same thing. Divide by twice the denominator, which is what? Two. two, right? It's two pi is one rotation. It's not a fraction. It's a whole thing. So let's take just the coefficient of pi once, if you will, and do one, four, nine, nine, eight, seven, six, three, divided by two. Boom. Minus seven, four, nine, nine, three, eight, one. Boom. Times what number? Two. The same number we divided by. And we get one. Now, what does that mean? Yes, the coterminal angle, which we're calling alpha, is now one pi once. That always gives you your new coefficient of pi whatevers. Well, what's another name for one pi once? Pi. Pi. Yeah. So let's draw that. Uh-oh, pi. That's over here. That's actually a quadrantal angle. What would the reference angle be? Very good. Technically, it's zero, right? But that's not acute. So there is no reference angle. It collapses down to the x-axis. Okay? So we would actually just say none. Okay? Because an acute angle has to be between zero and 90 degrees. If it had collapsed, if it had terminated up here on the y-axis, now the reference angle would be 90 degrees to get all the way down. And that's, again, not acute. So... Whenever your uh, angle terminates on either the X or Y axis, there is no reference angle, okay? There is no reference angle. Now, you could tell without doing this where it lands, okay? If you ever see like a full integer multiple of pi, a full integer multiple of pi, like we started with there, look at this. This is zero pi. This would be one pi. This would be two pi. 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi. Nine, I can't even catch up with myself. Y'all see a pattern developing here? Very good. If you see an odd multiple of pi, it's going to be coterminal with pi. It's going to be a half rotation. If you see a even multiple of pi, it's going to be coterminal with zero, okay? And it'll live on the positive x-axis. So knowing that, I mean, you don't have to do that. You could do what we did. But now just looking at it, it's like one, blah, 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 three. Ah, three is an odd number. Therefore, it lands over here. It's coterminal with pi, no reference angle. Boom, done. Well, the number in the ones place. The first number, if you read from right to left. Is that what you meant? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Okay. And then the last guy here, theta equals 36142.51. Oh, no um, there's no pi. But at least there's a degrubble, right? Holy, there's no degrubble either. So if you intended this to be 36,000 degrees and you forgot the degrubble, we're going to be like, that's not in degrees, that's that's radians, but there is no pi. Pi has already been multiplied in. Ah. So if it's in radians and pi is not visible, we got to go back to what we did when we had degrees. We have to divide by a full rotation, which is 360 degrees. But in radians, one full rotation is what? Two pi. That's the simplest version. Now we're going to think of two pi as a quantity because it's two factors. So here's what we do. We'll just do this. Man, I didn't pause it. Now I got to reload it. Golly. It's like y'all having to change batteries every three minutes. There we go. Oh, that didn't work. Go ahead. Don't wait for me. If you if you think you know what I'm about to do, let me know. <laughs> uh, yes, but you got to divide by 2 pi, the quantity. So that's where you got to be careful, right? If you're if you're being kind of like cavalier, you know, reckless, three six one four two point five one, and you divide by two pi, right, like that, is that going to cut the mustard? No, that actually cuts the cheese. <laughs> right? Yeah, because that's going to divide by two and multiply by pi. Your calculator knows the order of operations. So what you got to do is put. Now it's going too fast. 
you got to put parentheses two pi or divide by two, divide by pi, two division bars. And now there you go. That's the number of four rotations. So minus five, seven, five, two, boom. And then times the same number we multiplied, which if you want to put it in parentheses just for safety, that's fine. Boom. And there it is. This is coterminal with 1.628. And I'm going to put rads there. Okay. That is the coterminal angle. How do I know that that's the coterminal between zero and two pi? Because two pi is about 6.28, right? Yes. Yeah. And that number is between zero and 6.28. All right. Now we got to figure out where this fellow lives. Well, so. Obviously, where's the obviously coming from? Oh, look at that. There you go. We need to start thinking about what the pi multiples are in terms of decimals. Everyone knows zero is zero. Everyone here knows pi is 3.14, dot, 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 right? But we need to kind of figure out what pi halves is as well. And we need to figure out what three pi halves is as well. We also know two pi is approximately 6.28, so we can get that. So let's go to the calculator and figure that out. This is good to know. Pi divided by two, boom, is 1.57-ish. That's all you need to know. And then three pi halves sorry, is 4.71. Okay, I know three decimals is usually, but that's enough. So if you kind of have these memorized, these other two, 1.57 and 4.71, or if you have your calculator, you can just recalculate it. It is good to know what these are. So now we know where does 1.628 live? Quadrant two. Quadrant two. So over here, boom. And I'm gonna write that as 1.628. All right, now that I know it's in quadrant two, let's look at the reference angle. It's this guy right here. I'm stopping short of pi. So what do I need to do? Is it my angle minus pi or pi minus my angle? Pi minus, pi minus the angle. Yeah. So let's come over here and we'll write the reference angle, which of course we've been calling beta the whole time. Now, when do we want to use, do I just want to type in 1.628? No. And I didn't store it. So what I can do is come up back up here to the calculators line where it has it with all of its decimals and recall it. And now since it's first, I'm like, oops, now I can scroll back if you want. And you know how to insert? Yeah. Second insert is second delete. And now you can do pi minus that number. Or you can store it as x and do pi minus x, okay, if you forgot to store it. But go up there and grab it, and now you get this. Because if you're wrong in the third decimal when you report, I'm going to count it wrong. So the reference angle is 1.513 rads now we go to three decimals and i know that that's positive because it's obviously positive and how do i know it's acute because it's in between what it's in between zero radians and 1.57 radians yeah okay so there you go so those last two cases are kind of like you know exceptions most of the time though you're going to see something pi somethings and you're going to do it that fun way like we did, okay? All right, that's the whole that's the whole shebang there. Spiel, if you want to submit your notes um, into Canvas, <coughs> Canvas, <coughs> you can get a free 100. And then uh, the worksheet, I guess, is due when? Tomorrow. Yeah, worksheet's due tomorrow. I'll, I'll put that on, on a Friday. There you go. No, you don't have to worry about finishing over the weekend. I'll put that in Canvas as well. I'll put the due date so y'all get an alert. All right. Now, we are going to probably test next week, next uh, probably next Wednesday. So um, just be kind of planning ahead. We'll start the next section tomorrow, and uh, we'll just kind of do a couple of things from that next section, the, the important things, and uh, we'll test on Wednesday over 5.1 and parts of 5.2. Okay? Very good. Good productive day. <clears throat> Good productive day. Any comments or questions? Happy birthday, Laura Dern. She's 56 today. Bruce Dern's daughter. Yeah, there you go. Is she old? I don't know. Do the candles cost more than the cake? <laughs> That's how you know when you're old. <laughs> Y'all have a good day. Mm -hmm.
Oh yeah, clear your calculators. Y'all know that, right? 